Hey fellow freelancers, Johnny5 Alive here and welcome back to another Anthem video. Today I'm going to show you one of, if not the, strongest build in the game right now for the Interceptor. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, let's get right into things. This is the sniper build using the Truth of Tarsus, as well as the Elusive Talisman component, which dashing three times refills the equipped weapon magazine. So obviously you get, the moment you triple dash, you're gonna refill the ammo on both of these weapons. And this normally only has seven shots in it, and it takes an extremely long time to reload. Now you can pop off a shot, switch weapons, pop off another shot, triple dash both of them are refilled pop off a shot switch weapons pop off a shot that's the whole idea here now you don't necessarily have to run double truth of tarsus i tested this out it saves you a little bit of time because you could switch weapons faster than triple dashing and if you so happen to screw up the triple dash and only get a single or double dash out you can still swap weapons and get another shot off so it does in fact increase your damage per second but there are other weapon options as well i heard people saying that the avenging herald might be a good option hovering increases weapon damage by 200%, but I tried this and you have to have it out while you hover and then you have to switch to the Truth of Tarsus and I didn't see a 200% damage increase. So from my testing, it didn't work. And there's a lot of weapons and stats in this game that don't seem to work properly. And that's something we're gonna go into further in this video as well, because I've been doing a lot of tinkering and testing and things that would in theory make this build much, much better actually don't. So let's get into it. So you guys know the, the way this works is the elusive talent talisman in the truth of tarsus that's the main part of the build from there you can pretty much do anything now one thing i have done here is i put on a purple inscription which does lose out on massive amounts of armor and shield but you can see here increases weapon damage by 25 percent now you could combo this with the masterwork version which actually happens to be the elusive talisman so that's an extra 50 percent weapon damage with both of these now you are losing out on the armor and shield by a massive amount but that's quite okay because you're not going to be worrying about dying much anyways that extra 25 percent damage is pretty huge now the other stuff i have is the vengeance mage uh, vengeance matrix which increases all damage by 50 percent but also increases damage taken by 25 and if you happen to get low on health it'll increase your damage by 25 percent for five seconds so that's a bonus as well now the other ones i'm using are in any e hit increases q damage by 50% for five seconds, and then any Q hit increases E damage by 50% for five seconds. So you can get some extra ability damage out that's also boosted. And the last one I'm using is uh, gear hit streaks increase all damage by 30% by five seconds. So if you do throw out a couple throwing stars, you're gonna get another 30% boost to your damage overall. Now you could pretty much rock whatever you want here, but that's what I'm using if you're curious. Obviously you're gonna want a target beacon as well. Mine increases gear speed by 20%, which is helpful and the target beacon is going to make it so the enemy takes an additional 33 percent and when you're hitting the last boss with the truth of tarsus for like 120 140k damage that that spike is going to be super significant now here's the interesting thing i've been playing around with a lot of the assault and strike system bonuses and abilities so the one i'm using currently uh searching glaive hitting an enemy increases weapon damage by 60 percent for 20 20 seconds again with the testing of this it seems really confusing because i'll have the buff so in theory my weapons should be doing 60 percent more and when you're hitting with the truth of tarsus for 100k you should be seeing 160k which doesn't seem to be the case i don't know what's going on here but i did get a sniper plus 15 percent damage so that on 100k that's going to be 15k more so my damage should actually be increased for the next time i test this now one thing is interesting to note here i did mess around with some other abilities such as this one absolute zero weapon plus 100 percent blast damage i figured the the truth of tarsus being a blast weapon that does aoe blast damage with the gun it would all of a sudden get double the damage doesn't seem to be the case so if this was working properly this is something you would want to roll and i also put on another one in my other slots thinking i would get 200 percent. not the case so in, in having said all that my uh my recommendation is going to be the, the ruthless stalker for the increased if this stat was to work properly or if it is working and i'm just crazy then yes you want 
that 60% weapon damage by throwing out the glaive for that 20 second buff. Nonetheless, I get the sniper damage, so obviously I'm going to go with that. But the interesting thing about this build is if some of these things aren't working properly, you could pretty much run whatever you want and have a mixed bag. So you don't necessarily have to define this build 100%. But in terms of strike systems, I'm using the Plasma Stars upgraded, which is the Senadine's Respite. Hitting enemy weak points instantly restores 35 shields. So if you are getting into a pinch and about to die, couple throwing stars at their head and boom, you're back to full shields. It's great for survivability. And this build here, it's going to get you through Grandmaster 3. One of our members was running this build on GM3 and we did beat it. And now if we have four of us running this build, we should actually be able to trim that time down from four hours to about two hours if not less, because there's four of us running it, not just one of us. So we should be putting out four times the damage per second overall in that dungeon. So we should be able to trim that time down a lot. Now, people are arguing online saying physical damage doesn't boost your weapon or ability damage. In this case, I have other throwing stars that I was using. And the moment I switched to this that has physical 150 damage, my throwing stars went up like 15,000 damage a throwing star. If I'm hitting weak points, it's, it's hitting for like 25k a throwing star. Sometimes it's 15k. It's really confusing the way this works. Certain enemies, it hits for harder. Bosses, it hits for harder if you're hitting the weak points and all that stuff but four quick throwing stars should do about almost as much as the, the truth of Tarsus so the throwing stars are very effective overall and they do heal you so that's what I'm running is the searching glaive and the throwing stars I think that's a very prominent build because they're both you can use them at range and throw them which you're always at range because you're sniping. Now, as I was saying, I tried out the blast damage and on a second run, I wasn't seeing that much more damage overall. Now, here's the thing. I, you can craft the Truth of Tarsus. Once you kill, I think it is 10 legendary enemies with the Truth of Tarsus, you will be able to craft it. So I'll bring it up on screen. I kept on crafting a bunch of these, hoping for some sort of good stat. What I ended up getting was this, physical damage plus 150% damage. Now, people are also again arguing that this only affects your melee damage and not your gun damage but you can see on the last boss here one of my truth of tarsus is hitting for 160k and the other one only hits for about 120k so 160k that's an extra 40k damage that's certainly not 150 percent but it certainly is 40k more damage one of my truth of tarsus hits harder than the other and this one so happens to have 150 physical damage i have a feeling that affects it but looking at the stats on this one there's nothing there affecting damage other than all ultimate damage and that that has nothing to do with this so one of my truth of tarsus does in fact hit harder than the other significantly it has to be something to do with that physical damage there but it's certainly not 150 percent but this one here is hitting the last boss of the tyrant mines for 160k a shot so you get this shoot this switch to your other one shoot it dash 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 sh and then shoot the boss again switch to your weapon shoot the boss again and you should be able to kill the last boss of the tyrant mines in under two minutes and if you have a whole team running this you should be able to pretty much kill her before she even jumps i was playing with randoms on my team and absolutely smashed this thing in two rounds now if i had all my other buddies running the same build we should be able to just boom 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 drop the boss almost instantaneously which is pretty crazy if you ask me so I want to end off this video by basically saying we knew about this build except I didn't have the elusive talisman. We obviously ran this when we cleared GM3 three days ago and now we're starting to see videos pop up after the fact that the my video is getting lots of views which is funny but I got the elusive talisman today from clearing legendary contracts so now I'm able to finally make this video for you guys here today and what's interesting about this you don't necessarily need double truth of Tarsus and you don't necessarily need the exact components or strike systems. All you need is the elusive talisman and one truth of Tarsus and you're pretty much rocking some sick damage. You can play with your favorite assault systems, strike systems. You can do like a hybrid melee ranger build from this. You can play around with it. But again, I highly recommend the searching glaive because of the long range sniper ability of it, as well as the throwing stars for the healing component of it. When you do GM3 or GM2, you're going to find this runs uh, nicely with you because you're going to be able to heal up. 
Now, my Discord has been running this build on multiple interceptors, and they're clearing GM2 as quickly as GM1 now. So they're clearing it in about 25 minutes on GM2. So GM2 is now actually farmable it, with this build up with multiple interceptors running this build. So you could clear it faster with the better increased loot chance and it's not any harder in theory. It's just as fast because the time to do the defense waves, the time to pick up the orbs, it all basically remains the same and you're killing the guys just as fast in between the waves and the final boss. So you might as well do GM2 running this build with your friends. And this also means GM3 can be shaved down to a way less crazy time than the four hours that we beat it in. So there's that. And to end things off, we did clear GM3. There's a video on it on my channel. Some people say we weren't the world's first. If that's not the case, that's fine. But I think this is the first world's first video proving it. There is a video online of somebody uh, beating the title is GM3, but they don't show loading into GM3 like I did, and the boss they killed in 40 minutes, which is way too fast. Therefore, that was a GM2 boss 100%, and they were also using a cheese strat, uh, basically glitching themselves into a wall where they basically couldn't die. And it was in early access when things were broken. So, I want to say I want to believe that we are world's first on the release build with everything patched properly, as I have not seen any proof of that thus far. Either way, we're going to go back in there and clear it in under two hours with this build up, build setup that I've shown you guys here today. Boom. So there you guys go. That is the freaking Interceptor Sniper build. And just to show you guys quickly before I end off, if you want to see my Interceptor 360, there she is. I tried making her look like Widowmaker from Overwatch. I thought that was suitable for a sniper build. Boom. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for me here today. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to smash that like. Subscribe for more Anthem builds and videos. And if you guys enjoy the show and everything I do here, please do consider supporting it further through my Patreon. Any bit is appreciated. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.